Okay, so for deadweight loss, we have kind of a similar thing. Okay, the difference is, is that we're trying to find the area that is lost, okay? So if trading is not allowed, okay, and the initial allocation is suboptimal, which is virtually guaranteed, because how could it be known? Okay, then there will be deadweight loss. So what's an example of this? If we think of Alice and Bob, the two teenagers sharing the family car, the parents may have an allocation mechanism. Okay, the parents may say, if you get good grades, you get the car five days and your sibling gets it two days. Actually, one of my best friends going up ended up with a scooter as a punishment. His brothers got cars, and he got a scooter for getting C's. And I'm pretty sure the parents did that by design because the other kids in high school all mocked him for his scooter, especially in the rain. So that's one example. Uh, another example that's maybe more important in real-life natural resource problems uh, might be something like water rights allocation for farmers. So water rights that actually were initially determined by the Homestead Act in the 1850s um, in which people were given the right to own the land if they settled it and farmed it. And they also got perpetual water rights associated with that land ownership right. Okay, so in other words, on a first come, first serve basis, they got water rights. Um, and that resulted in a system of senior and junior water rights in California that uh, to some extent persist to this day. Okay, well the issue is is that if those people are not allowed to trade those rights it creates a big problem. So for example uh, it turns out that um, senior rights are held for example by rice farmers in the Sacramento River Delta. Uh, they can grow about nine dollars worth of rice with an acre foot of water. The downstream users with more junior rights may be growing much higher value crops uh, fresh produce, fresh market produce, cut flowers, roses, strawberries, things like that, avocado, much higher value but they have junior rights. They might be able to grow two, three, or four hundred dollars with a product uh, with the same acre foot of water. So what happens in times of drought is uh, the water rights are use it or lose it. So the rice farmers have to use the water or they lose the right perpetually. This is equivalent in our Cozian bargaining model to a case where you can't trade. Okay, so this is a case in our model where we draw our triangle, if I can draw it. And we have let's put the optimal right here just so the picture looks a little different. Oh, did I go too far? Well, I'll have to make that line taller. Hmm, let's not do that. Okay. So this is our situation where the curves cross is the optimal value. But now what we want is to say what happens if the allocation is suboptimal. So for example, let's say these high valued users get a lower allocation and let's say we're stuck here at the initial allocation. Okay? So this is Q1, Q2 versus Q1 star, Q2 star. Okay? What's happening in this scenario is that we don't get the maximum surplus because trading is not allowed. Okay? So what happens is we have surplus for the strawberry farmers, okay, that looks like this, that represents this trapezoidal area here. 
And then we have surplus for the rice farmers that looks like this here. And finally, we have a deadweight loss, which is surplus that could have been gained if they were allowed to trade, which is this amount here. Okay? So this is our deadweight loss. Okay. So in this example, the way we would calculate the deadweight loss is it's just a triangle, right? So the base of this triangle is Q1 star minus Q1. Okay, and the height of this triangle is the difference between these two heights. Okay, what are these two heights? Well, this guy is the willingness to pay, right? This is P1 evaluated at Q1. And this is P2 evaluated at Q2, okay? So let's say that P1 equals 50 minus uh, 1 fourth Q1, and let's say that P2 equals 25 minus 1 eighth of Q2. Okay, so we could also, notably, we could do or P2 of Q1 here if we wanted to, right? Okay, so first let's convert this. So let's convert P2 into um, a supply curve. So this gives us P2 equals 1 eighth of Q1, right? How did I know that? Because here we have Q1 bar is equal to 200, and here Q2 bar is equal to 200. Okay, so they're the same, so we can do our little trick. All right, now we solve supply and demand. P equals 50 minus 1 fourth Q1. P equals 1 eighth Q1. Subtract it off. 0 equals 50 minus 3 eighths of Q1 star. Okay, so 50 times 8 thirds tells us that Q1 star is equal to 400 over 3, which is 133 and a third. Okay. So there's our Q1 star. Okay. And let's say that instead our initial allocation was actually 33 and a third instead of 133 and a third. Okay? So this difference is equal to 100 units. Okay? Now what about these values? We have to evaluate them at the original Q1. So P1 of Q1 is equal to 50 minus 1 fourth Q1 equals 50 minus 1 fourth times 33 and a third, which equals, uh, should be 8 and a third, so we should have 41 and 2 thirds. Okay. Here, we also want P2 of Q1, which equals 1 eighth of Q1, right? We're using it as a supply curve. Equals 1 eighth of 33 and a third, which is 4 and 1 sixth. Okay. So our triangle area, our deadweight loss, is equal to 
q1 star minus q1, there's always a half when it's a triangle, times p1 of q1 minus p2. Okay, this equals one half times a hundred times 41 and two thirds minus four and one sixth. This guy here equals 37.5. And so this guy here equals one half of that, which is 18 and three quarters. So this should be uh, $1,875. Okay. So there's our example, all the way through from start to finish. And then there's one simpler version that we probably want to do, which is what happens if it's all or nothing, it's a little bit easier. Okay, so we'll call this deadweight loss example two. And in deadweight loss example two, we'll just do an all or nothing allocation. So Q1 equals zero. Q2 equals Q bar, okay? We'll draw our graph here. Okay, so let's say now that what's being shared is a bottle of wine. Let's say Q bar equals 750 milliliters in that bottle of wine. Okay, so we'll have P1 equals 250 minus one third of Q1 and P2 equals 750 minus Mm, that's not as much fun. Let's do 500. 500 minus two thirds of Q2. Okay, so we can convert P2 to supply. We get P2 equals two thirds of Q1. Can solve it. P equals 250 minus one third Q1. P equals two thirds Q1. Okay, zero equals 250 minus Q1 star. Q1 star equals 250. Q2 star equals 500. Okay. And we don't need to know P star in this case, but we could solve it. Okay. So this is the Q1 direction. And we've just shown Q1 star equals to... 250. Okay. So in this scenario, if they're allocated zero, then the deadweight loss is this whole triangle right here. Oh, can I rotate it? That would have been cool. Maybe I can't. Oops, that didn't work at all. Okay. All right, so there's my sloppy triangle. We'll just have to live with that. Okay. So the deadweight loss is literally this entire area in this case. Okay. So we have a base of Q1 star. This is from zero to A, pretty straightforward. Okay, so in this case, the deadweight loss is much simpler. It's equal to one half times Q1 star times A minus zero, which just equals A. A being the choke price for the person who was excluded. In this case, 
party number one. So this is one half times 250, and A is also 250. <coughs> okay. So 250 squared is 62,500 times a half. So this equals uh, $31,250. Okay, so that's the simpler way to deal with deadweight loss in cases where uh, you have uh, an initial allocation that's all or nothing. In the next video, we'll do some exercises from the module.